my YouTube channel. I am Paula Oyencore and I'm the founder of Rayo, which is a premium brand for ladies that wear a UK size 7 plus. Um, on this YouTube channel, I share videos all about how I started my own shoe brand and also how you can start your own shoe brand. I'm sharing my learnings and mistakes so that you don't have to make the same mistakes that I made when I started my own shoe brand. So here goes. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about how you can design your first collection even if you don't have design experience. I'm actually going to be speaking about three different types of designers. Um, so you basically need to decide which type of designer you are um, and then apply whatever I say to that. I would say there are three different types of designers. Um, I mean, these are just little nicknames that I've come up with. You don't need to take them personally at all. Um, but I think the first type of designer I'm going to call the know-it-all. So this is somebody who's actually been to design school and they actually know how to design their own shoes. They actually know how to design a collection of shoes and so on and so forth. And I think if you would say that you're a know-it-all, then this may not be for you because you probably already know how to design your first collection um but even if you are a know-it-all and you just want to hear what i've got to say then keep on watching <laughs> and the second type of designer i would say is the rookie so this is somebody who doesn't actually have design experience but you want to teach yourself how to design yeah but you want to teach yourself how to design i would say initially i was definitely like a um the, the third type of designer which I've not mentioned but I'm moving more towards the rookie side of things because I really think it's more it's beneficial to know um, a bit about footwear design if you have a footwear brand I don't think it's essential but it's just like a nice to know and if that is you then I would say utilize things like um Fashionary. Fashionary is basically a place where you can get like a fashion manual book or the shoe design um, book that they've got and it talks to you about everything to do with shoe design. Um, if you do want to go to like fashion school or do like some short courses so that you can become a know-it-all then um, definitely worth doing that. And then also utilize things like YouTube. I found a really useful um, Adobe Illustrator course on YouTube which I personally use to help me learn how to use Adobe Illustrator. Um, I'll put it in the link below, I mean in the description box below. Um, so if you are interested in that then definitely go for it. But um, yeah I would say that those are some of the things that you could do to kind of help you on the process of learning to become a more designer, designery person, someone that actually draws the shoes, that's what I mean. Um, and then the final type of designer I would say are the outsourcers slash the CBAers, the can't be asters. Um, and those people are, I would say, what I initially was, which is you don't want to learn how to design, you don't want to learn how to draw, you just want to outsource it. You want to get a designer, you want to work with a manufacturer, and you just want to have no stress when it comes to designing the shoes as in drawing them out. Again, which is totally fine, everyone can have their own different style of designing or producing their shoe brand that's completely up to you um but these are the three types of designers that i've identified that it's good to know kind of where you sit in those three because some of these things that i'm going to say in this video may not necessarily apply to you which is fine so i would say step one if you're designing your first collection is decide what type of designer you are because that's really going to determine how you move forward with your design process. If you are a know-it-all, then you know, okay, cool, I'm going to design all the shoes myself. I'm going to create my own tech packs. I'm going to do all of that jazz, which is absolutely fine. If you are an outsourcer, then you're going to need to look into um, outsourcing it. You're going to need to find your designer who you're going to work with um, to actually produce the shoes that you are trying to create for your first collection so first and foremost identify what type of designer you are the next step once you've determined what kind of designer you are i personally would advise that you move on to mood boards i love creating mood boards and this is basically where you're gonna like brain dump all of your creative ideas you're gonna put all of the kind of styles you love all of the colors the textures the patterns that you love into this mood board so that you can kind of get a good idea of um, 
I guess what kind of shoes you're going to produce for this first collection um and I think these mood boards you should whilst making them consider your demographic consider your customer profiles if you don't know about customer profiles you need to head on back to my research video on how to conduct effective market research and kind of skip to the bit where I talk about what you're meant to do with the research that you find um but yeah when you're creating your mood boards you want to think about customer profiles um are these designs are these colors will they appeal to this demographic will they appeal to these kind of people that i'm trying to reach i love um using pinterest for my mood boards i feel like pinterest is really great sometimes for the statues themselves sometimes more for like the colors the textures like the aesthetic and i love a clean aesthetic so i think sometimes pinterest is a really really great place because it's basically a digital board it's a social media mood board that's what it is so you could create your mood board in pinterest or you could um, use images from Pinterest and put it into like a PowerPoint. I love a PowerPoint. Um, I love a presentation, to be honest with you. Um, you can put it all into that and just kind of create this very visual thing of what you're trying to produce, what colors are standing out to you, what is going on when you're creating this board. And I think that's a really great place to start. You could also make a physical mood board. It doesn't necessarily have to be digital. So if you're the kind of person that prefers um, ripping pages out of magazines or printing images of and sticking them onto um, your uh, document, then so be it. Do what works for you at the end of the day. But step, I guess step two technically is to create a mood board and kind of garner your inspiration. Let the inspiration juices flow. So step three, refine, refine, refine. Now that you've got this mood board or these multiple mood boards, you need to refine it because if you send that to someone, what does that mean to them? It doesn't necessarily mean anything. You need to refine it. What are the recurring types of heels that are appearing? What are the recurring types of uppers? What colours keep recurring in these mood boards? Pull those out and start to refine and have a bit more of a detailed um uh idea of the kind of shoes that you want to produce i think i'm going to leave an example of my one here so basically after i created my mood boards i essentially decided okay cool based on this i want to create a strappy sandal and then i looked at oh i love this type of strap like i love when it's flat as opposed to curved i love when like the straps cross over in this way i love this thin heel like i want an ankle wrap and i was able to like get examples of the ones that i really liked and highlight specifically what i liked from that so you want to refine that either in the same document as your mood boards or in a separate document whatever works best for you and you can do that hand in hand with your designer it depends on how they work and how you guys work together or alternatively you could do it before you start working with a designer and you can um essentially like send that to them so that they can get a better idea of exactly what it is that you're trying to produce or even send it to your manufacturer and see if they have any similar designs that you could adapt that would be right for um this type of shoe that you're trying to produce sorry guys my bun looks a bit skew if so step four is to chat to your designer or your manufacturer so i think between stages three and four either after refining you're going to design them yourself um, once you've taught yourself how to design or if you're a know-it-all you're going to just design if you're a rookie you're going to teach yourself to design um but once you've done that the next step would be if you're an outsourcer to talk to your designer or um if you're a rookie or a know-it-all to talk to your manufacturer to see how feasible it is to make these shoes um a lot of manufacturers work with technical drawings or tech packs so they may ask you to send this along and obviously if you're a know-it-all you already know that um or you you would know how to make that to send to them but if you're a rookie you might want to use the book the shoe design book from fashionary to kind of um decide whether or not um sorry the that book to basically use the template 
for creating your own technical drawings. If you are an outsourcer or a CBA are, then you're gonna just talk to your designer to produce that technical drawing for you. So it's not something that you will need to worry about personally. Um, so yeah, at that point, send that to them and then obviously they'll let you know the cost of like the product uh, per unit, um, how feasible it is, the samples, the prototype, all of that kind of cost that are involved in that. And at this point, I guess it's a good question to ask, well, how many shoes do I actually launch with? This is really, really dependent on you. I think it depends on your budget, depends on your audience, depends on, <coughs> depends on what you want the brand to be about um, and to reflect. But personally, I, I initially tried to launch with two brands, but pre-orders helped me realize that actually one style was more popular. So I decided to just launch with one style in a couple of different colors. Um, and I think that's fine. I definitely think launching one style at a time is fine. It's a good idea. If you wanna keep costs down, it's a good idea if you want your products to be exclusive and so on. But at the same time, if you have the budget and the capacity to launch with five styles or anywhere in between that, or even more if you really wanted to, then go for it. I think it's just about determining like what works best for you financially and what works best for your brand. Um, but I think if you wanna launch more than like one or two styles, three to five is generally a good number in my opinion um but again that is really my opinion if up to if you want to launch with 20 styles that is truly up to you that's quite a lot in my opinion <laughs> but honestly it comes down to your budget it comes down to whether or not you're designing the styles yourself um are these styles exclusive to your brand or are they something that you're getting in wholesale anyway um that will really determine whether or not you uh launch with more styles but if you feel like you can only afford to launch with one style that's fine trust me it's fine and then the final step is step five to get your prototypes and your samples made so prototypes are um for my manufacturer essentially to ensure that the fit is correct to ensure that the last that they've made for this style is correct um, and this is more like for structural changes. Whereas with like the samples, that was more once I had approved the prototype and I was happy with it and I was ready for it to kind of go to production. They produced the samples just to make sure that this, yes, we're happy with this and we're fine to move forward with it. So that's essentially um, the difference between the two. And at this stage, I would definitely say don't settle for something that you don't love. This was one of my major mistakes that I made in my first, um, I guess, iteration of Rayo 2017 when I launched. That shoe that I launched with, I wasn't 100% with it. It wasn't what I had drawn. It really wasn't anything like what I actually wanted. The only thing that was probably correct was the pom-pom <laughs> on it. Um, but yeah, it just wasn't it. And when I relaunched, that's when I realized the importance of literally like loving every style that you launch with. Like, I don't, yeah, I think for me, that is really important. It's important that you love the styles. It's important that you like the styles because if you don't even like the styles, how are you gonna genuinely tell people to buy this style? How are you gonna get people to love the style if you yourself don't love it? So I just decided that, you know what, henceforth, I'm not gonna launch with styles that I don't love. Um, and actually I said I was gonna launch with two styles, but now when I'm thinking back to the sampling stage, I had three different styles. One of them was like a kitten heeled mule, but I, I just hated it. It just didn't look nice at all. So I will never launch that, sh that shoe. My mum loves them, so I'm gonna give them to her, but I hated it and I just don't think it was right for my demographic, so I didn't launch it. And I think sometimes we feel pressed to launch these things because we've paid money for it or we've got the sample or whatever, but if you do not like the sample, this is one thing that I'm telling you now as a learning that I have made, do not launch with that style. If you don't feel 100% about it, don't launch with it. And at the same time, that is not to say that oh, it needs to be perfect because I feel like perfectionism in many ways is a form of procrastination. Um, so that's what I would say. But at the same time, like, if you don't like it, don't launch it. 
simple as that and i think that's okay and if you're unsure maybe you need to just ask your customers like if you've already built up a customer base ask them that's what they're there for if they like it as in majority of them like it why not launch with it but for me one thing that i've personally taken on is that if i don't like the shoes it's not launching especially at this stage there's no reason for me to launch shoes that i don't like so yeah basically once you approve your samples and you're happy with everything then you are good to go darlings you have created and designed your first collection how exciting is that so as you can see it's a super simple process like it's quite straightforward but i guess the technicalities come more from like um finding the manufacturer designing the shoes the time that it takes to do all of that stuff the time for the prototypes and samples to come back all of that it's a straightforward process but you've got to put the work in you know so yes i hope that's been really helpful guys if you've got any questions feel free to comment below as always i will definitely endeavor to answer all of your questions um if you've liked this video you found it helpful definitely give me a like um and subscribe to my channel also guys let me know what kind of videos you want to see is there anything specific about starting a shoe brand that you would like me to do a video on do you have any specific questions that you feel require more of a detailed answer i am more than happy to answer them and produce videos on them just let me know but until then like comment and subscribe and i hope you have found this video helpful thank you guys bye